RT2RX6 here, back for another Transformers review. And today we're going to be taking a look at Blur and Drift, two of the Generations Transformers that recently came out that share a mold. Now, you may notice already that uh, mine look a little bit different than what you're getting from Hasbro, or maybe you don't notice, but I have added a couple paint apps, like on Drift, I added the uh, black for the scoop. And really, most of what I did, I did to blur to differentiate him from Drift even more and make it look like a different mold. And in that case, I added the black uh, vents at the bottom. You have to paint the middle, though, so they all match the top. Uh, gave him some customized looking rims. And then I didn't like the back when it was just standard blue so I added that and uh, gave them both painted exhaust pipes but yeah they're really nice they're I don't know if they're supposed to be based off of any type of car um, in particular they don't really stand out to me like anything kind of little bits and pieces of a bunch of different cars um, I did think when I first saw them that these two guys were exactly the same mold and uh well aside from the head sculpt but uh when i finally got them out of package i noticed that we've got the bigger spoiler on drift uh versus blur um yeah but it's a nice looking vehicle mode uh no real complaints there it's again it doesn't really emulate any standard car but what can you do Alright guys, sorry about that. I ran out of batteries and looks like this one may run out as well. But, back to the review. So anyway, I wasn't initially going to get uh, both Drift and Blur. Like I said, thought they were the, the same, very similar mold. And they are still very similar. But then I saw how the gun combines. I really liked that. And that was one selling point. And then I just started thinking about how all the other things that I own that, you know cost a lot and what's another 10 bucks for instance like the city commander and having blur roll out with his season three mate uh this crazy warbot guy of course panning back showed him with the uh, hot rod so yeah i'm um, i wish i still had that rc i sold uh, hopefully Hasbro will make a new one, but he does look good when he's rolling out next to some of his his uh, season three uh, friends. Even though you can't see uh, whatever his name is, Springer. Um, I also have this one for the upcoming armor, the uh, the more cartoon accurate hot rod. I don't really like it. I much prefer the Henke, but I guess the Henke is going to be the one going in the armor after those pictures. So if you get a, if you want to see a review on this and why I don't recommend it, let me know. In fact, if you want to see a review on anything on this table, let me know. Um, let's just go ahead and get rid of this hot rod and we'll let Drift be RC there. Yeah, because if we paint him pink, he'd totally be RC. Actually, the car might work out as a pink RC, but the bot mode wouldn't. That being said, let's go to bot mode now and stop procrastinating. Alright, so we're back and I've got uh, Blur and Drift in their robot mode and you can see they share many similar features. Um, I do like the differences in the Autobot logo placement on uh, Blur and Drift. One of the big differences with the two characters is their uh, face sculpts are quite quite different looking. Um, my understanding is that Blur has more of the IDW style of head. I don't know. I haven't read those comics. Um, the other big difference, of course, is that Drift comes with these two swords that store inside his sheath and then the big one on the back, which is held on by this uh, connection up here that swivels around up and down well not swivels it just moves up and down i wish it had a swivel joint so maybe you could you know set it offset or something now um i also on my drift here did do a little bit of detailing on the sword because i noticed in the comics this was a gold and he didn't really have the letters but i kind of wanted them to stand out so i did a quick yellow wash on it just to give it some color now 
of course, the drift toy and the blur toy can hold both their weapons. That would obviously be a given. You can't have a toy without them holding their weapons there. And they're capable of a pretty large variety of poses. Um, one thing that's missing is a waist swivel, um, but I don't really think you're missing out on too much here. Um, his posability is just, it's just great, and I think that was something that they really wanted to make sure they could uh, do with this toy. I mean, um, I've seen some videos where they can actually grab their weapons from where they're holstered and hold on to them. Um, it's pretty apparent on the uh, styling of the toy for for uh, these characters that they made sure, at least in Drift's case, because Blair doesn't have one, that he could pretty easily, you know, hold the sword with both hands uh, in a variety of positions, whether he's coming to swing at you or, you know, more of a traditional, you know, one of those coverage you might expect to see on a comic where he's got the sword in front of his face. You can even have him, uh, when it's on his back swivel here, if I can get this out. When it's on the back swivel here, he can actually, uh, let's get that down. He can actually, he's capable of reaching up and, uh, grabbing the sword with one hand which I personally like to display him where he's got one of these in his hand. You know, he's ready to draw out the big sword and take you down. Conversely, with Blair, who doesn't use uh, swords, he's got two little pistols which are a little bit harder to get out. And he's got these nice little pistols here um, as you can see, I put some light blue and some silver highlighting. Um, real simple modifications to do to these guys. I really only involve four colors. On on blur, I used a dark silver, a regular silver, the ice blue, and black. And that's all I used, and a small paintbrush. Um, he's got his sniper rifle here. Um, again, both of these can be held. Uh, I've seen... I didn't even look at the instructions to see if this is how it's supposed to be done or not, but I've seen some videos online that say that this is how you're told to put the guns on or whatever. Um, this to me looks like one of those blasters from the uh, sand people on Star Wars. I don't like it. Um, I can't take credit for this or anything. Again, I've seen this on videos, but this is what actually ended up kind of selling me on this guy is I liked the tripod look you could get by reversing these guns on his big sniper rifle. And to me that was the big thing is that, you know, this is a sniper rifle and uh, it makes sense to have the bipod on it. I'm sorry I said tripod. But yeah, and I, again he has similar posability. The uh, gun does hamper his arm just a tiny bit just because of the thickness. It can only go so high but uh, fortunately, he's got so many different points of articulation. It's pretty nice. And I've seen some people say they couldn't really get him into a sniper pose and he's carrying the sniper rifle. I actually found he is quite capable of getting into the sniper pose. And I will see if I can replicate that here for you real quick. Back again. I had to do another battery change here. Apparently, two of my three batteries were depleted. So anyway... I'll show you how I get him into a sniper pose. I put the disjoint the legs because he's going to be lying down. The head has to be facing up. Um, make sure you have the little side piece out of his gun here. Put the gun in his hands. And again, he's quite poseable, so you have the ability to hold it with both hands. So already, you're almost at the sniper pose. The important thing is... You want to turn in this shoulder here, and his head is not facing perfectly up, which is fine, because it makes it look more like he's looking through the scope of the rifle there, and 
once you set him down, you can play around with his arms just a little to make sure that the bipod is actually, you know, touching the ground. And you may need to swivel his wrists a little, which is nice that they're on ball joints. But once you get him all set, I'm going to use one of these guns in a second. <clears throat> Once you get him down there, you know, you can get him in a, a fairly convincing looking sniper pose where he's looking down the scope of his rifle. So, I don't know why people are having such trouble getting him in. As you can see, both pieces of the bipod are on the ground, drifts lying down, and while he's not looking up, he's certainly looking through his scope. So... I'm sorry, this is blur. I know I just said drift there. So, he is quite capable of a sniper pose. Um, overall, with the drift and blur mold, um, the only thing that's a little bit of a hindrance is that the back of his car, or the front end of his car, I should say, this tripod stinks, I need to get a new one, uh, the front of his car hangs off on the shoulders, so it gives him a little bit of a limited posability due to his... Uh, head being in the way but overall the molds are really nice very poseable very cool characters both of them um, if I had to suggest one I would say go with blur because the colors on blur just stand out more I mean you've got all the Japanese uh, writing and stuff and you know all the graphics on drift but really the color scheme uh, that the lack of a paint app like this was able to give blur look way better and if you have the chance do some of the little touch-ups just to make them that much better because really it's very easy and you know it doesn't take much time or talent <laughs> to do and it really makes a world of difference on these figures and again you know drift is a cool character i have nothing wrong with him i don't dislike him for all those reasons everybody cites but you know Drift looks, our blur looks much cooler when he's sitting next to, you know, the city commander and, you know, Hot Rod. They're his season three buddies, so it just looks right to have blur with all these guys hanging out. So, but we could consider Drift a season three -er because, let's face it, if he was going to appear, that would be the season he came in. And again, just to make it different, we'll throw in the cartoon accurate hot rod, which I despise. Um, but no, he's not for sale. <laughs> but anyway, this has been the review of Generations Drift and Generations Blair. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see a review of any of the figures that I've got in this uh, little group shot here or whatever, let me know. I'd be happy to do that for you guys. So this is T2RX6. I'll see you later.